Today we're talking about inconsistent flash exposures when using TTL. I'm going to tell you how you can tame it on today's episode of Ask David Bergman. Hey everybody, welcome back. Here I am, as always, answering your photography questions. Don't forget to go to askdavidbergman.com. Ask your own photo questions. I just might pick it to answer right here on a future show. Also, you're already here on the Adorama YouTube channel. If you haven't already, go ahead and click that button down below. Make sure you subscribe. Use the little bell so you get notifications as soon as all the great photo shows come out for myself and the other hosts right here. Thanks to the kind folks at Adorama. Today, I'm going to answer a question sent in from Brian O, and he wants to know... What are the best setting parameters for TTL? I primarily meter flash manually because my results with TTL are so inconsistent. Love your tips and tricks. Thanks. Brian, thanks so much for saying that. I really appreciate it. Thanks for watching and for sending in that question. That's what keeps this show going every single week. Now, TTL technology, what that is, is it's a flash metering technology. It's like auto mode for your flash. It's separate from the exposure settings on your camera. It really is just controlling the flash output. Now, TTL stands uh, literally for through the lens. And the way it works is the camera and the flash are talking to each other as that flash exposure is happening. Now, of course, a flash goes off like that. It's just the blink of an eye, but if you slow it down, what's really happening is the flash output is happening, right? The light is hitting your subject, and the camera is seeing that light hitting the subject through the lens, right? Now, I'm oversimplifying the technology a little bit, but it's seeing what's happening as that light is building up from the flash on your subject. And then when the camera thinks it's seeing enough light through the lens, then it's cuts off the flash exposure, right? So it's constantly talking to the flash. It tells it when to start. It tells it when to stop. I'm sure there's other things that are happening in there as well, but it's really fantastic technology for getting flash exposure uh, correct, right? Or, or how you want it. I mean, back in the old days, flashes were all manual. They were basically studio flashes for the most part. Even if you had something you put on the camera, you really couldn't control it in any kind of an auto way. You had to tell the flash exactly how much light to put out with each exposure. Now, the, the challenge with that is how much light you want hitting your subject changes based on how far the flash is from your subject, right? If you pull the flash back further, you need more light to hit your subject to, to get what you think is the uh, correct exposure, right? So, um, so those exposures are constantly changing. Now, in a situation where everything is stationary and everything is staying still, it's super easy. You can go manual, you can go auto, but everything is staying still. But the reality is that doesn't happen in a lot of situations. So let's talk a little bit about why TTL can be inconsistent. Now, I wanted to demo some stuff here. We're still sort of in a time when I'm in my small uh, studio here and I really didn't want to bring a model in. If you're somebody who wants to practice lighting, I have uh, used before the uh, Satellite 3D, really fantastic virtual studio software you use on your computer. And that is amazing. I'll, pu I'll put that link down below again with a discount code. Um, amazing software. But for TTL, it's kind of hard to do that in software like that. I really need to show how it works in the camera. So I didn't want to have a model standing here. If you want to do practice your lighting and you don't want to have your spouse or a <laughs> family member, what you can do is what I've done here. And it's a little creepy, but I purchased a mannequin head. <laughs> Look at this. So I don't have a name for her yet. So if you guys want to give me a name, uh, put it in the comments and I'll, I'll pick the best one. So these things are very cheap. I think it was 20 bucks. Um, and it's, I guess it's made for people to work on makeup and hair and that kind of thing. But it's perfect because it's got the same texture as a face. So it gives me a good idea um, for something like this. So what I'm going to do now is, is we're going to take a quick picture. Let's back her up. I'm going to put or against this dark backdrop. And let's go like that. And I've got my uh, Westcott Rapid Box here. Uh, this, I think, is the 20-inch, nice little small uh, beauty dish type uh, foldable modifier, really easy to, to, to travel with. And I've got a Canon Speedlight in here, the 600 EXRT. So um, 600 EXRT, yes. Not the two, still the first version. But anyway, um, let's go ahead and set this up. Now I'm going to put her there and I'm basically going to set this up sort of like I would do a beauty dish picture, right? Where it's just, I'm, I would maybe normally boom it in and have it overhead, but just most of the light here, the point is most of the light is coming from the front and it's a pretty simple exposure. So let's do that. And I'm just going to take a quick frame here. I've got my 1DX Mark III. It's a 24-105 lens. Um, I'm using the 
remote transmitter, the Canon flash transmitter, the, uh, which one, <laughs> I can never remember the names of this thing, the STE3RT, and that will give me full TTL wirelessly with the flash, which is really nice. So I'm gonna take one without the uh, flash first, just to make sure I've killed all my ambient. And yes, you can see almost all my ambient's gone. There's a little bit there, but most of it's gone. So the flash will overpower all of that. Now I'm on TTL and I'm at zero exposure, uh, flash exposure compensation. I'm just gonna let the, the camera and the flash decide what to do here. So 250th of a second, F4 at 100 ISO. And let's go ahead and take a frame real tight. And now you can see how that looks, right? And it's a perfect exposure, right? It's exactly where you want the flash exposure to be, really because I'm zoomed in tight. Because I'm so tight and I'm filling the frame basically with the flash, the part that the flash is hitting, the camera and the flash are gonna do an amazing job reading that. Now, the challenge comes if I wanna zoom out. What if I want the subject to be a very small part of the frame? Take another picture and I'm gonna zoom way out as much as I can here in this space and I'm gonna put her a little off center and you can see there, the, if you look at the light that's actually hitting her face, you can see that it's brighter, right? I haven't changed any of my settings. I'm still at TTL with zero exposure compensation. My exposure on my camera has not changed and it is brighter. Now, why is that? Well, if you think about it, the, the camera is looking at the entire scene and it's seeing a lot of darkness, right? And so, the flash is trying to work a little bit harder to bring more light into the scene, right? Now, having said that, this camera, the 1DX Mark III, has some technology in it that can read the face. It knows there's a face, and it's gonna do the best it can to expose for the face, regardless of the rest of the scene. So technology, as it improves, it's making TTL even better. Um, but even with that technology, and I'm not sure if that's actually on right now because uh, that's, I think it works more so if I was using face detection, which I am not in this case. So if I was using face detection, then it would actually lock in on that exposure even better. But um, because I'm using the, um, I'm shooting optically, not using the uh, electronic shutter, I'm not using the face detection. So because of that, um, it's brightening up that, the exposure on her face from the flash more than when I was tight, right? So that's why it's inconsistent because it's doing the best it can, but it doesn't know exactly what I want. Now, how do I overcome that? Well, there's two ways. I could use ex flash exposure compensation, not, not camera exposure compensation, flash exposure compensation. I would do that up here from the transmitter, from the flash uh, transmitter. And I could then, if I shoot that wide shot and realize that it's a little brighter than I'd like, because all I care about is the light that's hitting her face, right? And I want it to be consistent. If, if I realize it's a little too bright, I could dial in some exposure compensation. Let's try it here. Let's go, I'm, I'm in group A. It's just the one flash. I've got A here, A there, very simple setup. And let's dial it down, maybe a stop and a third, right? And I'm gonna make that same picture zoomed out. There you go. And you can see how much darker it is on her face, and it's actually much closer to the exposure when I was super tight. So here's the thing. If I was gonna be shooting exactly the same focal length for a bunch of shots, right? If I was doing a portrait and everything was locked down, maybe the camera on a tripod, everything's locked into place, and then I might wanna start with TTL and dial in exposure compensation when it's correct. Now remember, if I have multiple lights going on, it's gonna get more complicated, right? So if I've got three, four, five, six lights with gels and background lights and overhead lights and whatever, um, it's gonna get confusing, at least for me, you know, maybe not for the camera, but, um, but I wanna make it as consistent as possible. So that's one way you can definitely dial in that exposure compensation. For me, personally, on a portrait shoot, I want the light to be consistent. So I'm gonna dial in manual. I'm gonna switch this from ETTL to manual exposure, and I'm gonna lock it in. So it's not making any decisions for me. The camera is telling the flash exactly what I want. It's telling it how much light to put out of that flash and to cut it off at the same place every time. So it doesn't matter if I zoom out or I zoom in, it's gonna give me the same consistent light every single time. Now, let's go back to zero exposure compensation. I'll show you one more example. If I move this light around to the side like this, let's say I want to do a profile shot. Let's turn her maybe three quarters like that. And this is almost like Rembrandt lighting, but it's more of a profile. So if I go like that now, I still want the light that's hitting her 
from the angle of this light, I still want the same amount as the first picture, right? I want that, her skin tone to be exactly the same light. Now, I know because the light's coming from this side, from this angle, if this side of her face is gonna be in shadow, that's great, that's what I want, right? But the part that's hitting her face, I want to be exactly the same. Let's see what happens. I'm gonna do one tight, like so, and then I'm gonna zoom out and do one wide, like so, and you can see what's happening now. The zoomed in version, again, just like before, it's pretty good. But when I zoom out, you can see again that it's getting brighter. So what's the answer? You can use exposure compensation if everything's locked down and not changing. For me personally, in a portrait situation, I prefer to go manual. I wanna lock it in. Every single light I'm gonna set up separately. The way I build up a portrait is I do one light at a time. So if I have my background lights, I might do that first, get it to the exposure I want, the color I want, and then lock it in on manual and then turn it off. Then set up my next light. Build that one up, make sure it looks how I want, and then lock it in on manual. Then I'm gonna turn on both lights together, the background and whatever the other one I was setting up, see how they mix together, make sure they look good, make any adjustments I have to, and on and on and on and on. So I'm gonna build up that picture until every light is exactly how I want. And then once they're all set in manual, I can do anything I want. I can move around left, right, I can, I'm talking my position, not the lights, but I can move around, I can zoom in, I can zoom out, and the light on the subject it's gonna be exactly the same every single time. So that's how I like to do it. Now, when, when would I use TTL? I use TTL actually quite a bit in a certain situation. What we call, excuse me, putting the camera down, what we call a run and gun situation. So something where you're moving around very quickly. In my case, it's often backstage at a concert where I might be photographing in the dressing room or you know, at a, um, anything where you're following somebody and you're moving around, maybe you have the flash on camera, you could be holding it off camera. If it's on camera, maybe bouncing off the ceiling, That's I do that quite often. And the thing is that your distance, my distance to the subject is gonna be changing constantly. So as I'm maybe backtracking and I'm photographing somebody and they're moving and they're coming in and out, whatever's happening, I'm gonna let the camera in that case make talk to the flash and make that decision on the flash exposure because it's just too inconsistent for me to possibly change manually the, the flash exposure from frame to frame. It's not gonna happen. So the TTL does an amazing job. And again, with technology, it's getting better and better every single camera generation. Um, but it still is an auto mode. It's still making the decision. So when you don't have time or you don't, it's not practical for you to make those settings yourself, Go ahead and uh, use TTL, it works really great. When you're in a situation like this where you're setting everything and you want consistency, the same light every time, go ahead and switch over to manual, lock it in and you'll be good to go every single frame. Thanks Brian, I hope that helps explain how TTL works and why your exposures might be a little inconsistent. Remember, if you have your own photo question, go ahead and send it in to askdavidbergman.com. There's a form there you can fill out. Uh, I am back here every Monday, 10 a.m. Eastern with a brand new episode. I hope you come back next week. I'll see you then right here on Ask David Bergman.